Today we're going to start taking a look at linear graphing and that word linear has line in it so it tells us we're going to be graphing lines. To be able to do that we need to be able to plot points and to plot points we need a Cartesian plane. So it says we plot points here on a Cartesian plane. It's made up of an x-axis so the horizontal line along here is the x-axis and we always label that. And the vertical line we've got going on here that's the y-axis. Notice that there are arrows on the end because these axes go off infinitely in those directions. So you might have noticed that I said the word axes. That's the plural of axis. It looks like axes, but it's not that in this instance. Now they cross at something called the origin. The origin is this point here. That's where they intersect or cross. And we label that with an O for origin. Now there are four quadrants. You might see that the y-axis and the x-axis have broken up this here into four areas, quad meaning four. And to remember which way we go, I'll tell you a secret in a moment. Not a secret, a trick. So this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. So the way I remember this is I remember I'm on a Cartesian plane and I draw a C. So quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, in quadrant 4. That's how I remember. So any point on a Cartesian plane can be described using a coordinate. In order to locate a point, you must know how far to move horizontally from the origin, which is represented by the x-coordinate, and how far to move vertically, which is represented by the y-coordinate. We always write coordinates in the same order. The x-coordinate is always before the y-coordinate. So you'll notice in this box here it says ordered pairs. If you had 2, 5, that represents the x-coordinate is 2 and the y-coordinate is 5. If you have 5, 2, that would be x is 5 and y is 2, that would be a very different coordinate. They're both in quadrant 1, as it says, but two different points entirely. This is why we call them ordered pairs. Order matters. You can't just mix up your x and y coordinate. So to see, in our lovely graph here, we've got a point. Now, the way that we label the numbers on the... Cartesian plane if we're required to number them is I like to put them underneath. So this is on the negative side, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So that was the x axis that we just did. Now let's do the y axis 1, negative 4. So this particular point here, first we identify how far left or right we go from the origin, and you'll see that this point matches up with two units in the x direction. And in the y direction, well, we're going down, so we'll see that these have negative values. So this point here corresponds to 2. Remember, we always do the x-coordinate first, and then negative 3, the y-coordinate second. So that coordinate is telling us we're going 2 units to the right, and then 3 units down. So just as a reminder, we always do the x-coordinate before we do the y-coordinate. And I like to remember that it's always alphabetical. We have a Cartesian plane here. We know it is because we've got the x-axis, the y-axis, and we've got the origin in the middle here. It asks us to state the coordinates for the points labelled A to E. So with point A, I notice that we're at negative 1 on the x-axis and positive 1 on the y-axis. So point A would need to be negative 1, 1. Now you'll notice when I'm writing coordinates, I always put brackets around them. You always need to put brackets around your coordinates, otherwise we're not really sure what you're trying to communicate. So with point B, I notice that I go two units to the right, but I don't need to move up or down. So that means that we've got a y, sorry, x coordinate. I nearly pulled the classic blunder there. We've got an x coordinate of two and a y coordinate of zero. X always comes before y. Now looking at our next one, C, I see that we've moved, C, that we've moved one unit to the right and we've moved one, two, three units down. I see it lines up with negative three here. So that'd be one, negative three. So for D, we are right in the center there. We didn't have to move left or right, up or down. So this one has the coordinates of the origin. So I'd like you to pause and think about what would the coordinates of E be? Okay, if you said negative 2, negative 3, unfortunately you've mixed up your coordinates. But if you said negative 3, negative 2, you've remembered to go in the x direction first and then in the y direction. So negative 3, negative 2 here. You're now asked to plot some points. So we've got 
f is 2, 4. So we need to go 2 units in the x direction and then 4 units in the y direction that's positive. So this would be f. And you could put the 2, 4 over there if you wanted, or if you just want to write f, that's fine with me. Maybe I'll do that. So g is 3, negative 1. So 3 units in the x direction and then negative 1, so 1 unit down. So this point here is g. So let's now look at h. h is 0, negative 2. Didn't have to move left or right, but we moved 2 units down. i is negative 2, positive 3. So negative 2 x direction, positive 3 in the y direction. There's i. So the next question says, what do you notice about points that have an x coordinate of 0? Okay, do we have any points with an x coordinate of 0? We had d and we had h. So what do we notice about d and h? Um, what have they got in common? I notice that they're both on the y-axis. So they are on the y-axis. That's interesting. What do you notice about points that have a y-coordinate of 0? This one has a y-coordinate of 0 and this one has a y-coordinate of 0. So let's look at points B and D. Ah, I notice both of these are on the x-axis. So the next thing we're going to be looking at, now that we've got some points under our belt, is looking at something called the midpoint. Now that's the middle point of a line segment. So let's draw some line segments. A line segment is just a line that goes from one point to another. And we want to draw the line segment that joins these pairs of points listed below and then find the midpoint of the line. Okay. So this gives us a little more plotting points practice. I'm going to pick up my grey lead pencil to plot some points here because I might make a mistake. And it's really, really important when you're graphing in future to make sure you're using a pencil, especially when we're drawing lines. If we're drawing lines too, we're going to need our ruler. So I'm going to put that away and get it out when I need it. So let's draw this first point here. Negative 2, 3. So negative 2, 2 units in the x direction. 3, 1, 2, 3. Here we go. That's our point. Now let's draw our second point here, 4, 3. So that means 4 units in the x direction and 3 units up. Okay, ruler, draw a line between the points. Okay, we want to find the midpoint of this line. This is our midpoint here. So we wanted to find the midpoint. The midpoint has a coordinate of 1, 3. Point in the middle. Okay, let's label another two points. So now we've got negative 2, negative 3, and then we'll go to 4, 3. Let's get our ruler to join the points. Alrighty, I'd like you to think about how you might go about finding the midpoint of this one. But if you look here, you'll see I've got the same length on this side that I have on this side. So the midpoint here, x coordinate is 1, y coordinate is 0. So rather than having to draw these points all the time, which is good practice for drawing, but just say we had a whole bunch of points and we wanted to find the midpoint for them, surely there's an easier way. There sure is. There's the midpoint formula that we can use. It's a nice shortcut to find the midpoint of a line segment without needing to draw it. Here we've got two generic points labelled. So this one appears to be point 1. You'll see that the coordinates of this point are x1, y1. This 1 underneath is just a little label. It's saying the x coordinate of point 1, the y coordinate of point 1. It's not a power or anything like that. So the second point here, this is point 2, the x coordinate of point 2 we've just called it x2, and the y coordinate of point 2 is y2. So we've got these two points, x1, y1, and then x2, y2, in brackets again, which is really important. If you want to find the midpoint, what you effectively do is you take the average of the x values and the average of the y values. And when we do this, I encourage you to look at the example before and see if it works. But we're going to do a few extra examples down here. So to find the midpoint, you need to find the average of the x values. That will be the first coordinate of your midpoint. So you might recall we're finding the average. We add things together. So we're going to add together the x coordinates of each point and we're going to divide it by the number of values, which was just 2. So then to find the y-coordinate of the midpoint, we're going to do y1 plus y2, take the average, divide it by 2. Oh, didn't give myself enough room there. So let's have a go at finding the midpoint of these points without having to actually draw them. So this first one here, we've got 
this point and this point. I really, really recommend the following step. Every single point you encounter has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And if you're not careful, you might accidentally do the wrong thing. So I recommend you do this. Let's call this point one. Let's call it X coordinate X1 and it's Y coordinate Y1. If you're not careful, you might accidentally think it's X1 and X2. But as we talked about at the start of the lesson, there's an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So this is the second point. So let's call this X2 and Y2. Remember, these numbers are just labels. They're not powers or anything. So to find that midpoint, you always need to write your formula first. Now that we've got the formula, let's substitute in the values. X1 was quoted as negative 3. And then we had x2 was quoted as 5. And then we take the average, so divide it by 2. Let's now take y1, which was 4, add it to y2, plus 6. Okay, negative 3 plus 5 will give 2, divide it by 2, we get 1. 4 plus 6 gives us 10, divided by 2, we get 5. Okay, let's look at this next two-point set that we've got here. We want to find the midpoint again, so I've gone ahead and already put my formula in. Now, if I was rushing, I might accidentally substitute in negative 2 and negative 3 here. But if I pause and go, no, that's x1, and that's actually y1, that's not x2. This one is, oh, I nearly read the wrong thing, x2, y2. Let's now substitute. Okay, we need to use your directed numbers knowledge here. Negative 2 plus 4 will give us 2 over 2. And then if we've got negative 3 plus negative 6, it's like we've got a negative there. So we're going to have negative 3 minus 6 will be minus 9 over 2. So you might have not done this in as many steps. You might have gone straight to 1 and negative 9 over 2. You can leave that as an improper fraction if you like, or you could change it to a mixed number. Sometimes mixed numbers can be a little bit easier when we're plotting points, but we don't need to here. The last thing we're going to be learning about today is the way to find the distance between two points. Now, you can't just get a ruler and measure the points because it's not necessarily to scale. There's an equation that we actually use instead. So it starts with d equals d for distance. We're going to have a square root in there. Now, you've got to choose one point to be point one and one point to be point two. Doesn't matter which you choose. I usually like to make the first one point one and the second one point two. You notice there are two coordinates here, x1, y1, x2, y2. To be able to find the distance between them, we need to take the square root. And what we're going to do, x2 minus x1, in brackets, and we're going to square that entire thing. And we're going to add that to y2 minus y1 squared. Now you might be familiar with Pythagoras' theorem and that's how this works. So you can definitely ask about that later if you like. We're just going to be using this formula to practice it. So we are going to similarly be labeling our points x1, y1, x2, y2. So we want to find the distance. So the first thing I've immediately done is write the formula here. I like to really carefully check which value I've got. So I'm subbing in x2 first, x2 was 4. We're subtracting x1, which was negative 2. Oh, we've got some double negative action there. We'll deal with that in a moment. That whole thing is squared. Plus y2 was 3, minus y1 was 3. Oh, and we're going to square that. This is going to be 4 minus minus becomes plus. So 4 plus 2 all squared. So that will be 6 squared plus 3 minus 3 will be 0 squared. So we've got the square root of 6 squared. Now there's a few things you could think of here. You could do 6 squared is 36, then take the square root and get 6 again. Or you can realize that the square and the square root are inverse operations which undo each other. So this is telling us the distance between these points is 6 units. Okay, let's find the distance between these points. Okay, x2 is 4, minus x1, minus 2. We might want to deal with that plus right away. Then we've got y2 is 5, 
minus y1, so minus negative 3 all squared. That's going to be a plus as well. So that's going to become 4 plus 2 will be 6 squared, plus, and we do the brackets first, we're doing bid mass here, so we do 3 plus 5 first, so 3 plus 5 will be 8, and that's got to be squared. Now you cannot write, this is not equal to 6 plus 8, that would be 14. It's not equal to that. You'll see why in a moment we're going to get a value that's not equal to 14 at all. So if we wanted to figure this out in exact form, let's figure out what's inside of these brackets. So 6 squared plus 8 squared. So ooh, we can just write, if that's going to be square root of 100, that's going to be 10. So you'll see this is not equal to 14 that you might have thought before. You can't undo two squared things added together. You need to find out what this was and take the square root. So if you got a value that wasn't equal to a nice round number, just say you got, I don't know, something completely different, you got the square root of um, 19, that would be your exact answer. But if you wanted it as a decimal, you put it into your calculator and you'd round to the number of decimal places given. Two decimal places if not told otherwise. So today we reviewed what coordinates are, how to find out the coordinates of points on Cartesian planes and plot them. We also looked at how to find the midpoint between two points and the distance between two points. Now's your opportunity to do some independent practice. You've got worksheet one and the 9a questions to do. Good luck.